this other point can only encompass that angle of the sphere. And none of this bouncing light, bouncing light over here, you know, might be able to affect, you know, these areas. But the thing is that now we're getting further away from the object. So the further away you get from the object, the more the light's going to start falling off over here and here. You know, it's, it's, it's going to start falling off. So the end result is that you'll find that around the midsection, the light is just not capable of reaching. So you will typically get a slightly darker edge. But if any, if there were, if there was any other reflective surfaces to catch light that were closer, then it would affect where that dark edge is. So you've got to be very careful how you deal with this um, this dark spot. Uh, classical painting terms call it the core shadow, <coughs> but I I don't. It's it's really just a, an area that the light cannot get to directly or indirectly. Then you'll get something like that. <coughs> All right. I'm just getting over a cold. Now, the next thing I want to deal with is um, enclosure. Uh, now, actually, hang on, wait. Just before I move on, because br since we're dealing with diffuse reflection, diffuse reflection is secondhand light. Um, if you imagine, oh, well, let's just start a new page. If we have a, a light bulb, we set up a light bulb here, and the light bulb fires a light ray out, <coughs> and it strikes the eye directly. That is many, many times more powerful than a light ray that strikes a diffuse surface, any kind of synthetic um, or organic, any non-metallic, non-transparent object, um, white eggshell paint, you know, white eggshells, uh, typical wall painting, um, you know, dirt, wood, plastic, wax, you know, these things are all, are, are, can all fall under, you know, they, they all emit diffuse They'll, they'll transmit diffuse reflections. And so the light that strikes any one of these areas is going to be dispersed. It's much less intense, and it's not nearly as bright. It's not nearly as intense as light that comes directly from a light source. So typically, you will only see this type of light. This, this type of light will only be able to illuminate um, it's only able to create noticeable changes in illumination um, in shadowed regions. You know, if I if I have this thing and I've directly lit it, <coughs> secondary reflections. You know, the, this um, diffuse reflections, diffuse illumination, uh, the secondary illumination. Uh, will not be able to affect any of, will not be able to make any noticeable change in areas that are lit directly. It'll usually only have a very, very subtle effect. Emphasis on subtle. In the shadow regions. Sometimes it's not visible at all. But that's, that's the way the diffuse lighting works. Okay. Um, enclosure. Enclosure is something else I'd like to talk about. Uh, it's a it's a term I came up with when you're dealing with. Um, all right, it's <coughs> so much easier for me to show you this way. When you look at my hand, you know you'll probably notice that wherever there's crevices, like in the in the cracks of my fingers, there's always these dark spots. You can find these dark lines. Anytime you get, you know, uh, an area that, that starts to clench up, you know, any kind of crevice like this, you're going to get a dark spot. And the reason for that is, if you imagine, <coughs> imagine yourself sitting inside here, inside my hand, right? And you see how, how I close up my hand, it starts to get dark? 
If you were an ant, your little bug, sitting inside my hand, and you were looking outwards, you know, if, if you were sitting inside, and all of a sudden, you know, these fingers started to close up on you, you see, out here is where all the light come from. All, all the light is coming from your environment. It's coming from other sources. But if your surroundings start to wall in, then that light can't get to you, right? So things are going to start darkening. Okay, so when you think of whenever you're dealing with any area that is enclosed, it is blocked off from any kind of external light. Direct lighting cannot get in. Indirect lighting cannot get in. Um, it, it will. It will. It, you'll usually get areas that are very dark. See this? See how dark that little hole is? And you know, there's all this ambient light bouncing around from the walls. But you know what? This area inside is just so enclosed that it just can't get to it. It's all being blocked off by the outside of my hand. So this is the, the concept of enclosure that you'll often find. <coughs> okay, so anyway, um, to get a good example of, for enclosure, um, enclosure is something that's, like I said, occurs uh, anytime you're going to have a crevice. So a good example of something that um, whenever you get a crevice, like if we take two spheres and touch them together, you know, you're going to wind up with a, a crevice that's going to form between them. So I'm going to pop in my silhouette, uh, and I think I'll deal with the shadow now. Okay, so by throwing down my shadow, I've determined which direction um, the lighting is coming from. Actually, uh, a good exercise is to do something like this. Make a series of balls and then light them from different angles. So to do that I'm going to start with one which is lit directly from above then off to one side So I've got shadows that are going in different directions. Ooh, I gotta rub my eyes, something's in my eye, ouch. Okay, Whew. sorry about that. Have the shadow fall behind the ball. And we're back again. Okay, so got all these shadows. <coughs> now I have to light them according to the light that is casting the shadows. This one, it's going to be the lighting is much further away, so you're going to get a rim light. a great little exercise to do. So, able to light these from pretty much any angle um, I want. 